All right, now that we have our pick all drawn up, we're going to take it to the grinder and get it down pretty close to where that line is, but not too close. Remember, we don't want a lot of heat in our pick. And take note of how often I'm dipping it in this water. We do not want heat in this pick. And with a grinder, you, or any rotating strong parts like this, you do not wear gloves because it can get caught and it can screw up your hands. So you can feel the heat a little bit better that way too, but still you don't even ever want to really feel the heat. All right, we got our pick all ground down, and we got it kind of close to the uh, the drawing there, but not too close. You can see it's still pretty fat, which is good, because we don't want to get too much heat close to it no matter what. So next, we're going to take it to some files. Okay, now we have it all cut down, ground down quite a bit there. We still need to shape it out completely. You can see it's definitely just, it's not perfect, and it's definitely too thick still. So what we're going to use are needle files. And these aren't the diamond coated ones. These are the actual needle files. And um, I have the one out that's kind of, kind of rounded. So it's not completely flat on both sides. It has just a little bit of curve to it there. And I do that that way whenever I'm filing, it goes up the other curves nicely instead of having a hard, um, to side on it, which can sometimes get caught in a curve and just it'll put a divot in there, then you have to buff it out. So now we just take it and we get a piece of wood, and we take our hacksaw and we cut a straight line through it and measure it, you know, just test it, see how deep it is. Put our pick in there like that, like that, that way it doesn't move as we're filing it. And that'll keep it from bending. Remember, you always go forward, and you also remember you want this part too to stay nice and smooth through there, so you don't want any divots anywhere. And that's how you do that. If you want to use a bigger file, you can. Just remember, these sharp edges on the sides here, they will cut into these rounded spots right here and they'll leave divots and you'll have to buff them out. So it can be a problem. So the only time I use this is on the bottom portion of this. And when I do it, I make sure I'm not touching this end right here. And you know, just give a demonstration, I'll stick it right there the softer side on it, or the uh, the more finer side on it, put it there, just drag it straight off the end right there, but not too far back. And when you're doing this too, you want to do the top part with the curve first. The reason why is when you're cutting it down, you want to make sure you have your profile curve perfect on top, because that's, you know, that's the basis of it. So you want the profile and the curve perfect on top that way you have plenty of metal left on the bottom in case you go too deep trying to get this curve or the uh you know the top part of the pick and the curve right so if you go too deep you got more on the bottom that way you can shape it off so always do the top and the curve first another thing you can do um with the curve on this is the dremel you can use it to actually here it's right here you can use it to do the curve on the pick easily so you can take these sort of bits right there everybody knows those those sand ones or those hard stone sand ones they kind of look like this like that you can use sandpaper 
sandpaper bits, sandpaper drums. And those are, work really well to, um, if it fits your profile nicely, see if, see a little bit. if it fits your profile nicely, maybe that was a little bit better right there. So if it fits your profile nicely, you can put the drum right in there and get that curved really nice like that. And so that's a good way to do that if, you know, it's the perfect, you know, type curve you're looking for. So you can use the bigger ones for more of a bigger curve. Just, you know, find the size you're looking for and try it that way. Anyways, I'm going to file this down and I will be back. So now you can see I have it almost completely finished filing off. I got it nice and thin. I'm going to get a little bit more thin right there, but you can see the tip of it right here. There's still a lot of metal on the outside here. So what I do with that is I take the file, I hold it, I put my finger on the inside of the curve there, and then just like that. That way I can keep it doing it like that, and it'll keep the curve. And remember, you only go back on the file. File is not a saw. Or you can use sandpaper. And you can see now, which I'll get a little bit more fine, finer tuned in just a second. You can see how it's looking about perfect to shape there. So I'm going to shape this off just a little bit more to get it exactly where I want it. One thing to keep in mind is when you're doing this as well, you don't want it too thin too. Um, just think of it being just a tad, tad thinner than where it's at right now. Because when you're done buffing it and everything else, when you're done sanding the whole thing and buffing it and getting a clear polish on this, it will come just a little bit thinner there. And we are going to sand the, um, the top and the bottom with actual sandpaper as well before we buff it. Two things to watch out for when you're grinding down your pick and you're sanding it is watch for the thickness here so always be careful of your profile there see how this one's got way too thin at the bottom here i don't trust the life of this one i'll throw in another cheap handle and this one as well i'll throw this in a cheap handle but it's a perfect perfect profile the only problem is is i sanded it way too long this was 19 thousandths and look at that now just i mean it's not bending it it's not breaking it that's just how thin it is so it's probably about 12 or 13 thousandths now and I'll throw that in another handle for special circumstances, but be very careful when you're removing your metal, because once it's gone, it's gone, and it really sucks to just lose, you know, time and work like that. Now that we have it all shaped up, we have exactly the shape that we're looking for, we want to take some really coarse sandpaper, and right here is 60 grit, and we're going to scratch up all this area that's going to be where the um, handle will be. Just like that. We don't have to go all the way up here where it's sticking out, but as much as we can where the handles are. We do this to give the epoxy and everything else something to grab onto so it's nice and coarse when we stick it in there. Let's see if I... Uh... Yeah, there we go. So yeah, nice and coarse. Now, we want to... The edges that we just filed off, we want to get them a little bit more fine now. So I'm going to use 100 grit and just take the pick. go around all the edges on it and just get it be careful with the pick end here obviously just you know please be careful here but just the all the parts that we just got done filing and you want to get it down to so if you look at the edge here you can see there's still a lot of lines there you want that to be smooth and you do the hundred grit do 220 maybe even take it to 400 next 
You don't have to go any further than that, but yeah, do all the edges all the way around. And 400 will be good enough because by the time you glue this in and everything, the rest of the polishing that you're going to do on the pick and the sanding later will get the rest of this nicely polished up. But yes, you want to get this part more than anything where the pick is nice and smooth now.